The San Joaquin Valley is California's largest agricultural region and an important contributor to the nation's food supply. Valley farms produce half of California's farm output, including most fruits, nuts, dairy, and vegetables for processing. But this important region is in a time of great change and growing water stress. Agriculture helps drive the economy and is also the valley's biggest water user. Farms are pumping more groundwater than is being replenished in local aquifers. This can lead to dry wells, less water to streams and wetlands, and reduce reliability of this vital drought reserve. Excessive pumping is also causing lands to sink, which harms infrastructure, including canals needed to move water throughout the valley. In 2014, the state mandated communities to bring their aquifers into balance in the coming years. Local stakeholders are now engaged in planning processes to implement this law. About 120 groundwater sustainability agencies have formed across the valley to address the problem. Most have until 2020 to adopt sustainability plans and another 20 years to bring their water basins into balance. Attaining balance will require difficult decisions because in many basins in the valley, water use will need to drop, which will cause a reduction in irrigated acreage. The valley will need to adopt a portfolio of cost-effective new supply and demand management measures to reduce pumping. Our research shows that capturing more local runoff and storing it in local groundwater basins is the most promising way to augment valley water supplies. And compared to many proposed water supply options, recharging groundwater comes at a cost farmers can afford. Water trading is another promising and cost-effective approach as it allows scarce water supplies to be moved to the higher revenue crops, which also generate more jobs. Both buyers and sellers benefit. We know that the valley needs to store more water underground, but accomplishing this will take some work, both on the part of locals and the state. A key constraint is the ability to move water from the wetter northern part of the valley to the drier south, where demand for new supplies is highest and conditions for recharge are best. Investments in new conveyance infrastructure and a rethink on how the water system is operated will be needed. In addition, we need to incentivize farmers to expand recharge by spreading water on their fields. That is a very cost-effective way to recharge and it's not being done enough. Bringing groundwater supplies and demands into balance will require more integrated approaches to water and land management. This offers new opportunities to tackle water supply, quality, and environmental challenges jointly. To succeed will require using scarce water resources to produce multiple benefits for people and for wildlife. Tackling these related challenges effectively will benefit not only the region, but the state as a whole. The changes to water and land use coming to the valley will bring opportunities to forge a new path for the natural environment. The farmland that will come out of production to help balance groundwater basins could allow for the expansion of habitat. And the need to expand groundwater recharge could be well suited to creating habitat for migrating birds and other species while also improving flood management and recreation. But adopting such approaches will require Valley stakeholders to engage in a much broader and more comprehensive planning for the management of the region's lands than ever before. The story of water and land use in the San Joaquin Valley and its consequences for the region's economy, public health, and natural environment is a story of continuing change and adaptation. Addressing the changes that lie ahead will not be easy but the Valley's residents have a long tradition of tackling problems creatively. The entire region and California as a whole will benefit if solutions to the Valley's problems support the economy while improving public health and the environment.